Hello, Keller Williams agents. Today, we're going to be going over the residential real estate listing agreement exclusive right to sell. I'm going to be going over really quick on um, just a simple explanation on how to fill this out. So you'd go into your loop and you, you pull in the document that is um, the track docs of Texas Realtors. Um, you go in there and you try to autofill as much as possible. You would click here and you would you can autofill as much as you can. So you put seller, or listing agent, listing broker, as much information as possible on here. So you just fill it out to the best, fill it out whatever blank that you can. The more information is the best information. So they put in their expiration date, listing date, the original list price, lot blocking information, and you'll get that from the tax records. So I will go search this property out. Um, then I click on the realist tax and that's one way to find it. There's multiple ways to pull the tax records. Um, but I get grab all that information and I go back to the loop and enter all that information into the autofill. When you autofill it, it's going to go in and it's going to put all this information as much as you put in there as much as possible. For this listing agreement, I'm put the seller just so we have something in there. Address as um, 56 Kingwood. You put your city state and zip. Phone number, put your email address here. Um, like again, um, on your listing agreement, you need to fill out. All of this needs to be filled out. You might not have a fax machine anymore, but you need to fill as much as possible. Uh, your broker information, put your broker information. If you're not with Keller Williams, for whatever reason you're watching this, um, put your broker information. This is a standard Texas one uh, real estate listing agreement. So again, you go to the property and this is going to be the legal description. So you put the lot and block. You put the addition subdivision information. Put as much as you can find through the tax records, which again for this one would be right here. And I can find all the lot, the block, the anything that it's in. The, this is a subdivision, Kingwood Greens Village. This is a village, a section. You can put all that into the legal description right here. Lot, block, the addition, the county, and then the actual address. Scroll down, you want to put any exclusions that the, maybe you and the sellers made. So um, if you have any exclusions, let's say you wanted to leave the chandelier, you put all that information here, or you can add the addendum um, from Keller Williams. Um, we have our own form, you put see addendum, and then you can list them all out on there. So, but you also can uh, put them right here. Signature page, so this is where you would sign. This is where your seller would sign. If the property's in a homeowner's association, you need to list it. They need to let us know right here. Is it or is it not? So for this purpose, it is. And then, of course, you know, by now you, uh, you're going to have the listing price. You start ahead this predetermined. If you've already met with the seller, you're going to fill this information out. So um, for this one, we'll put 650. We're still with numbers around. And all this is negotiable. This is between you and the seller. Once you get that agreement worked out with the seller, you want to put this information here. The term, this is when the listing is going to begin. This is when the listing is going to end, you know, and all of this is negotiable. This can be 30 days, not recommended. This can be six months. It could be years. So, um, you know, pretty standard is six months. Um, always try for six months. And if you need to extend, you can ask for an extension. Um, that can always be amended. This listing document can be amended. So it changed. So uh, broker's compensation, and um, this is all negotiable. So for this purpose of this sale, we've asked, we've agreed to 6% of the sale price. Um, this has to be listed. And then that way, if it didn't happen in writing, it never happened, right? So put that there or whatever it was agreed upon. Make sure you explain to them what earned payable, um, they need to read this listing agreement. You need to read every 
paragraph in here, understand what it is, what it means, because um, clients are going to ask you, and you need to be able to explain to them in detail what it means. So if you don't know what it means, do some research. Um, if you're in our office, give us a call. We're happy to talk with you and explain it to you. Um, we're going to go down here. So other fees and or reimbursable expenses. Um, a lot of people leave this blank. Um, an experienced agent um, might have changed this through the years, and this is where you would add an early termination fee of whatever amount that you feel you should be compensated for, depending on um, the amount of photography you're going to put in it, the marketing expense that you've done in the past, that you know what it's going to take, um, that you're going to spend on the property. You can add this to the listing agreement and and have an agreement with a seller if, you, if they terminate it for reasons that is out of control and um, they can terminate the agreement but they're agreeing to pay this fee whatever you decided to put in here um, on on any listing agreement that i've done over the last um, three or four years um, 90 percent of them have a one thousand dollar or 995 dollar termination fee so i found out that with the 500 dollars termination fee um, they were paying that and uh, we're not in it to get paid the termination fee and because we don't make you know, it costs way more than the $500 to buy your time. For me, the time is most important. So um, it's not so much the photography and marketing expense. Um, it's the time that you invest in it. And um, so um, once I added, uh, raised the limit to uh, close to $1,000, um, they're more reluctant just to call you and tell you to pull off the market. So... Again, this is all negotiable. You don't have to put anything there. Some people don't feel comfortable. It's completely up to you. Uh, protection period. Um, you know, I always put, uh, try to put 180 days on this. Um, so this is all negotiable. And this is, this protects you if the listing um, is terminated for whatever reason. Um, and then they cannot sell to whatever client if you provide that to them in writing a list of the people that seen the property, you know, for that amount of days and that protects you. And then that'll stop somebody knocking on the door. If you do an open house and tell them fire your agent, um, you know, I saw the house at the open house today and um, we can both get a better deal on this property. Just a good, just a simple example. The county, you need to put the county that's in, always list this out. Listing services, um, so uh, for the most part, you're going to want to try to always get it where they agree to put it on the MLS and um, not always, you know, it might be a private listing or it might be a listing. There might be a special reason that they don't want it on the MLS, but this is, this will, um, you're letting the client know and they're letting you know, it's okay to, to list this on the MLS. So you put that there. Um, or whatever has been agreed upon, right? So if you're going to do it in a certain period of time, um, if they instruct you not to do it, you put that here. If they instruct you not to do it, you're going to put that, you're going to click on number two right here. So if they're instructing you right here, uh, let me go back and correct that. Um, if they give it in a certain amount of time, they say, don't list this for, until we get done with a project or whatever in three weeks. Um, you would put that number here, a days, or whatever that information comes out to be. Broker will not file this. We'll go here. So they don't want it on the MLS at all. You agree with that? Access to the property. Make sure they understand how that works. Um, our company uses uh, centralized showing or showing time now. So you put that information here, you write showing time. And they are or they're not going to let you put a lockbox on the property, whatever they decide is here. So you might, they might allow you to put a lockbox on it, or you might have to do an accompanied showing where um, you come and show the property for all of them. So that will go here. That's all going to be negotiated between you and the seller. Cooperation with the brokers, you want to put that. So, um, you know, we always put the 3%. So 
So we don't do sub latency in our office, so that's going to be zero. Um, we only do three percent. It's a non MLS broker, zero. So intermediary status. Um, if they're going to allow you to do an intermediary, explain to them what it is. Um, if you're going to represent the buyer, if somebody comes and they want to um, see the property, you show it to them. If you represent represent both sides, you know, are you we're going to do an intermediary within our company? If somebody else in our company sells, you have to get that agreement in writing. Yes. Or if they say absolutely not, you're not going to, you're going to put no. So all this is negotiated. Broker's authority right here. Um, just let's, let's put the list on the internet. So it does not want the list on the internet. So it does not want the address of the property listing it. If they don't want any of this, you have to put all this information down. So if they tell you either one of these, you need to select them. They also need you need to know if it qualifies for what kind of loan and what the seller is willing to take uh, for financing. You know, conventional VA does it qualify for VA? Um, FHA does it qualify for FHA or cash? And you know, now, not just does it qualify, does the seller agree that they're going to go through the process of these? They might have bad experience or for whatever reason. And also the these options over here. Not as common, but you might see them owner financing. You'll see that. And then, so you'll need to get their permission on what you're going to accept. That way there's no misunderstandings when you start presenting offers. Always put the address in here. If it's not auto populated, you want it every single time. You don't want this handwritten. This all needs to be typed out. So representations, um, any information that the seller's current, if they're not um paid up or if they have extra liens on the property any additional liens on the property or anything that they need to know about and uh, that might come up they need to disclose that here um, so if they're aware of any liens or anything um example mechanics lien or um a tax lien all that information needs to be disclosed to you so it's important to have it on here and these kind of things bounce back sometimes and and it's best to know this information going up front and it's in writing. Okay. This is was added this year. So sellers aware of the property being located in the in a public improvement district. Um, for most of most of our areas, not all of them, will be the mud district. And um, so that's they need to uh, make you aware of that as a listing agent. So whatever it's in, they need to provide that here. If it's MUD 109, um, if it's in a public utility district, I think you say it a lot like Missouri County, some different places. And then, so they need to make you aware as a listing agent what they're in. Special provisions. We try not to put very much information in here unless something needs to be in there. Um, so um, we don't like to add a lot into the special provisions, but if you have something that qualifies for special provision, you would enter that here. Default, this was added this year. Make sure they understand this information. So what they're signing, um, this was added this year. So if the seller does not cooperate with the broker to facilitate the showing, marketing, or sale of the property, or otherwise reaches the listing, seller is in default and will be liable to the broker for the amount that goes in uh, paragraph five, and this one it was 6%, or any other compensation uh, broker is entitled to receive under the listing. Make sure they understand this, that it's not just a one-sided contract. So they've added this verbiage here and um, really in my mindset to just make it more clear to both parties, the seller and the listing and the brokerage. Mediation, we always want to try to mediate the problem. I did other documents for this one would be, of course, information over services, seller's disclosure. Um, it wasn't built before 1978. Let's see, we would do have a survey for this one. It is in a uh, mud. So we'll go down here. 
and you'll, any documents that are related to this property, depending on the property, you want to put right here. And make sure they understand what they're signing. If they have any questions, everything needs to be agreed to before um, they sign any document. So all the signature pages are going to be here. You need to sign it. Seller needs to sign it. And that's a residential listing agreement. So um, make sure you study this. This was just a simple example of um, doing a listing agreement through dot loop in a board, the state of Texas with a 2020, 2022 updated document.